Um, so we just wanted to do a quick meet recap while it's still, you know, pretty fresh. Um, Boss of Bosses 3 was last week. Um, it went pretty well, didn't hit all the goals that I wanted. Um, but overall, I'm really happy with my performance. And so I just want to kind of recap what happened, um, why things went the way they did from my perspective, um, and, you know, talk about the meet environment and where I'm going headed forward. And so this is my coach, Jacob Cloud. Um, you know, we want to do this together because we planned a lot of the meet together. Um, obviously, Jacob was there the whole time helping me, warm-ups, attempts, everything. Um, and, you know, he has a bit of a different perspective as a coach versus um, as a lifter in this particular meet. So I think we'll get started with, I think we'll get started with um, goals. Yeah, so going into the meet, um, well, first of all, getting invited to the meet was pretty interesting because Ben's name wasn't really, you know, on the tip of Dan, Dan and Sparkle's tongue, I don't think. And so uh, we talked about it. It just so happened that my family is close by and my sister just had a baby. So I was like, hey, let's make this trip. And so I kind of begged him to, to send an email and, and he did and sent Dan some of his lifts from the USPA state meet where he totaled 1908. And um, Dan said, absolutely, come, come, you know, uh, what, what weight class? Do you want to do wraps? Do you want to do sleeves? Yada, yada, yada. So we set up some goals and our number one goal is to win. Um, it's a big, uh, big meet, huge names, probably the biggest meet Ben's ever done. And he's been to a bunch of USAPL nationals and the Arnold and things like that. Um, but we knew that if we could walk away with a class win, uh, that was a big victory. And so we kind of went back and forth in the months leading up to it on what, what weight he should be weighing in at, uh, if he should be wearing uh, knee sleeves or knee wraps. And really we went back and forth on that until the very last minute. Um, he got some experience in knee wraps, but not really enough for us to feel comfortable with the kind of level of talent that was there. Um, you know, even without Yuri, who was just an absolute phenomenal lifter, uh, you got Dan and, and all these other really high level guys, uh, we felt a little more comfortable going with the sleeves. And so we kind of made that switch or made that decision concrete at the last minute. And we decided that, you know, in the interest of Wilkes, uh, Ben needed to cut as much weight as he could without getting really uncomfortable. And, you know, even with the 24 hour weigh in, I was concerned that if he cut too much weight, uh, it would it would kill his performance a little bit. And so you ended up coming in at what, 191? 191, yeah which I thought was perfect. I wanted like 87 to 88 kilos, and I think that was 86.8 or something like that. Um, really didn't feel like you were suffering a whole lot during the during the cutting process. Um, do you want to tell them what you walk around at before that? Yeah, so I think um, about 10 days out of the meet, I was around 210, um, and that was first thing in the morning, so I was going to bed around, you know, 215, 220. Um, honestly, a little bit uncomfortable at that weight. You know, didn't feel great going up and down stairs, blah, blah, blah. Um, and, you know, I was kind of starting to worry, maybe that's a little bit too much. Um, and so about a week out, I started, um, I cut down a little bit on my carbs, not a whole lot, but a little bit. Um, and, you know, cut back on some of the food volume um, and got down to about two or four, um, five days out or something. Um, and then, so I, I hung out around there, two or four to two or two, um, all the way up until the day before the meet. Um, and, you know, the day before the meet was, so this was Thursday, it was pretty typical in terms of um, a weight cut. So I think I had 12 or 24 ounces of fluid that day um, and, you know, just eating small meals, three or four ounces of chicken um, every couple hours. And so, you know, I didn't feel that terrible. I did an hour in a sauna um, just to see, you know, how much weight I could drop. And I think I lost about three or four pounds in that hour. Um, but, you know, it was, the sauna went up to 190 degrees and it just, it was a little bit too intense. And so we decided don't even need to do it. Um, and so I, I didn't feel that bad on Thursday, on Thursday night. I didn't sleep great um, because <laughs> I accident. I thought my uh, uh, girlfriend had some purple raft, you know, the BCAAs, and that doesn't have any sodium in it. I thought she had some in the bag, and so I made a little bit up. Turns out it was actually her C4 pre-workout, and so did not sleep that night. But, you know, I was okay. Um, and then, so I weighed in at 191 on... Um, Friday morning okay. and then just rehydrated as normal no IV nothing special just lots of fluid I think I had probably two and a half 
gallons of fluid that day, lots of salt, lots of carbs, and went to bed just my normal weight, 219, I think, was what I went to bed at. Yeah. And I felt great by by three, two or three in the afternoon, I felt 100% ready to go. And that was Friday the day before. Still worth noting, a lot better than the two hour weigh-ins from some of your past months and stuff like that. Yeah. So that's a real big benefit. We can cut that kind of weight not really have a performance degradation. So we didn't feel like we needed to adjust our attempt plan uh, at all. We had talked about the attempt plan quite a bit ahead of time. Um, we had a very good feeling for kind of our worst case and our best case scenarios, but ultimately we were gonna adjust that based on how he felt that day, how the competition was going. Um, I told him about a month out that I really thought he needed to go seven of nine with our attempt plan to, to have a good shot of winning the Wilkes for uh, Raw. And it's actually exactly what ended up happening. So um, I thought that went really well. Um, do you want to get back? I guess we can start with the actual meet day itself. Did we miss anything? Well, do you want to talk about what our planned attempts were, kind of? Yeah, like sure. So two weeks out? you know, we we really wanted to open kind of light um, at that big of a stage. Even with a, a really experienced lifter, nerves are still kind of a factor. You've got travel. You've got a different uh, type of mono lift, different squat bar. Uh, they ended up, I mean, the squat bar ended up being pretty brutal. Uh, you cut your hand. Nick Ramey totally hosed up his hand on it. Dan Green cut his hand. So it was things like that we didn't want to have to worry about on the first squat. So we opened at three to two and a half kilos um, there. On the bench, we had a very solid plan. Um, bench training gone okay, I think, at the state meet. We hit 182 and a half on the second, and we went for 190 on the third. And he missed the third like an inch from lockout. And so uh, our plan was to go for a PR a small meet PR in the second of 185. Um, and then somewhere between 190 and 200 on the third. Um, and we stuck to that plan. He ended up getting, I mean, bench was uneventful. You got 192 and a half. Um, I guess the, the most eventful part of that was the strict judging. It was very, very strict. Um, long pauses, long holds. And um, he got an extra long hold uh, because of some elbow bend. And so I kind of went up to the judge and, and they were nice enough to let us hand off. So I was right there by the head judge. And I kind of tried to butter her up a little bit and say, hey, you know, that seemed like a long time. What can we do on the next attempt to get better? And, um, you know, this is a, a common coaching trick, uh, most recently made famous by New Zealand. You know, you go and you kind of whine to the judge a little bit and maybe get a better call. Um, and it worked a little bit on the third. It was still very strict. Um, and I, maybe we had another five pounds, but it wasn't, it wasn't worth risking. So. Deadlifts were really, that's his, that's his bread and butter. And I knew that we were gonna have the biggest pull in the 198s. That ended up, we didn't really care so much about the 198s by the end of it. I don't know that there was another 198 in sleeves. Um, and we didn't necessarily have the biggest pull with guys like Dan and Yuri. Um, but really, we'll get to this more in a minute. Our, comp, our most of our competition was in flight D and we were in flight C. So we really had to plan those attempts during flight A and B using all the math. And, and I'd really like to give a shout out to his girlfriend, Stacy, and my wife, Jessica, who um, double and triple checked our math. And, and Stacy had a nice spreadsheet going so that we knew what our Wilkes would be on each attempt and where we thought that would fall. And we ended up guessing almost to the, I think literally to the kilo, um, the second and third place competitors, Larry and um, Andrew. Andrew yeah. And uh, we, we knew going in they were going to be really stiff competition and they both had really good days, better days than we even expected. Uh, and we had to guess based on their opening, their listed openers, and what we thought they could get on their thirds, what they would take on their seconds. Um, and we ended up nailing those really well. And, and that ultimately is the only reason we won. Uh, all three of those guys missed their third attempts and it, was, it came down to the second attempt. So uh, we took a big jump, one, two, took a heavy second on the deadlift knowing that if he missed his third and those other guys missed their thirds, that he would still win if they took what you would guess, and they did, luckily. Um, ben had done a lot of research on those guys and knows a couple of them, and so it helped a lot to give me that. He, what he said there, I just trusted, um, and so that helped a lot. And then the, the third attempts, we were hoping uh, to kind of go really big, uh, but he had a last minute, sort of last minute switch from sumo to conventional, um, and that, you know, He's a machine, he could take just about anything. But I, I still think that took about 20 pounds off him that day on the, on the deadlift. Um, and it just wasn't quite there. It kind of got a little away from him. Um, 
but but it was you know it ended up being really interesting with the, with the, with the attempt calls having to go from a different flight and, and luckily we had experienced that at uh, last year's USAPL nationals where he was in the B flight and we were trying to um, compete with the A flight guys and he finished second and beat the American record at the time uh, and later got increased by John Heck in the A flight but kind of a good experience I think it really helped us like okay we didn't we didn't stress about it we used our best guesses and, and then went from there. Um, Let's go back a little bit and talk about kind of squats and warming up for squats and stuff like that. Okay. Um, so, you know, warming up for squats actually felt great. Um, I think um, we worked up to about 6.30 on our last last warm up. Yeah, I had you work, I had you warm up pretty heavy. It was, it was a pretty small jump from the last warm up, um, but I really wanted to check the depth. And there was a couple little cues we had worked on. You know, when you wear knee, knee wraps, it's really easy to get tight. And when you're wearing, wearing the sleeves, it's a little harder. You have to get a little more concentrated, and I think that was our biggest thing that we focused on during warm-ups. And um, for me, regardless um, of sleeves or wraps, um, squats not something that comes naturally to me, and so I have a lot of cues that I have to keep keep right in my head to, yeah. to make my squat, you know, manageable. And it was pretty intimidating for a while. There, we were um, in the warm-up room sharing a rack with Yuri, with Dan, um, and with, with Kevin the, Oak, with, yeah. Larry, and. All the